Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Helmets of the World. I'm Mike B, and today we're going to be looking at the Swedish Model 37 helmet. So, like the model designation, this was designed and developed in or around about 1937. And Sweden used these until about the mid-60s, if not a little bit later. And uh, Finland also designed their Model 62 helmet off of this, which is pretty interesting. Um, but we'll focus on this for now and kind of go over what it was used in and all that stuff. Um, as you know, Sweden was a neutral country during World War II, but the possibility of them being invaded at any second was very, very, very real, as other countries had, you know, kind of faced that fate. And so they wanted their military to be very prepared. And they also supplied Finland with a bunch of stuff like this. So a lot of the M26 helmets remained in Swedish use, but the Finns wanted the newest and greatest stuff. So they actually requested a bunch of these in Sweden and sent them to Finland. So these were used quite a bit during the Winter War of 1939 and the Continuation Wars of uh, 1940 through 45, pretty much. And that's probably why Sweden or uh, Finland eventually designed their helmet off of this, because it's actually, for its time, a very, very, very good design. It's very low profile. It's just pretty to the point. Provides an adequate amount of protection. I haven't ballistically tested one of these, but I'm sure it'll fare just like any other steel helmet from that era. Probably stop 9mm and 45, and the rest will go through. It's not made for direct hits, but uh, flying debris, rocks, uh, just falling and stuff, and some form of shell fragments, depending on how far away they are. But yeah, it's painted this nice... I call it camouflage gray, but it's just gray, kind of blends in with the blanket. And gray is the least recognizable color to the human eye, so that's why a lot of countries use that during that time period. And uh, you'll notice the triple crown decals on here. Those were applied during World War II. I started doing that around 1942, um, somewhere around there. But that's kind of the date that all the collectors have locked down as being relatively right. So it's got a two-point leather chin strap much like the M26, and the liner is basically the same thing as an M26, we'll get to that, where it's just got three leather pads, just like most European helmets of that time, and they attach directly to the shell through, through rivets right there, and they've got split pins on a little, here I'll try and, try and show you, there's a little band, I don't know, the lighting and stuff, um, there's a little band right back there, a little steel band on each one versus a huge steel band around the whole liner because I kind of saved on money and stuff and steel. So that's why they chose to do that and updated from like the M21 style liner. But yeah, this is, uh, you can see lots of pictures of these being used in the Winter War and stuff and on Swedish soldiers during World War II. This is a radical design for its time and that's probably why it was used for so so long. In the 60s, they started updating these with like an M1 style liner system versus the traditional three pad liner system, and um, but they still use the shells themselves. So yeah, it's a pretty cool helmet. I used to sell these. I found a little stash, and now they're gone. I don't I don't know if I can get any more of the World War II ones. I can get the um, 37. They're called 3765s because about 1965 is when they started redoing the liners, but um, they're getting pretty collectible these Swedish helmets if you've got one consider yourself lucky because they're pretty much dried up and uh, they're a must-have for any helmet collector because of the history of them you know the ones that were sent to Finland are not going to have the decals on them because they didn't apply them because obviously they're not going to be used by Swedish soldiers so uh, if you get one of those that's really beat up and stuff chances are it may have been used in the, in the winter war but uh, who knows um, anyways yeah, if you, that's really all I've got on this helmet. It's a nice World War II era helmet, and it was one that was used for many, many years. It's pretty much the equivalent of like our M1 helmet for um, Sweden and Finland. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, if you're new to the channel, you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you like the helmets, uh, there's a whole playlist of them that this video is on called the Helmets of the World. And you can definitely check that out. I've got too many helmets, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, it is what it is. I'm a helmet collector, first and foremost, and then a gun collector and kind of just general military surplus enthusiast. So yeah, if you do that, and then uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. That is actually in the description, the link to that. That helps me make better videos, get cool stuff like this to make videos on and review. And uh, yeah, it really helps out. But if not, that's totally fine. I appreciate everybody who's viewed my videos past and present, and we'll see you next time.